I want to welcome everybody to Google Photos, and today we're going to be talking about Google Photos. But before we talk about Google Photos, we need to talk about the problem that exists. We need to talk about backups. We need to talk about all of these different things. So that's what we're going to start with. You should all have the sheet. There we go. You should all have the sheet. Before we go into Google Photos, before we go into anything like that, we need to talk about what is a backup. Okay, so don't pay attention to the things on your screen right now. We'll be on your screen in about about 25 minutes time or so because I want to show you how to set up on a phone, on a tablet, and then we'll be on this screen here. So what is a backup? Now to do this, we're going to do something very, very, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my phone. As of this exact point in time, my phone does not have an internet connection on it. I am literally just sharing it up to the screen, no internet or anything like that, and I'm going to take three pictures. One, two, three pictures. All right. So we see I have these three pictures. They are on my phone and only on my phone. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. They're on my phone and only on my phone. So here's the question. I have three pictures. How many copies of each picture do I have? There's no internet. One. One. I have one copy. This is not a trick question. We're going to get into the trick question in a minute. So this is not a trick question. I then take the pictures that are on this phone and I airdrop them. We'll talk about airdrop a bit later on, but I airdrop them over to this phone. How many copies of each picture do I now have? Two. Two. I then take them and I airdrop them to this iPad. I then have three. three. I then put them on my MacBook Pro. I now have four. four. We understand what a copy is, right? Yeah. Here's the loaded question, though. Do any of you understand how many backups I have? How many backups do I have? I have four copies, but how many backups do I have? One. No. Three. You say one? Three. You say three? No. Do you say none? Depends is not a, depends is an adult diaper company in the U.S. Uh, thank you for letting me know what you happen to be wearing, but uh, the answer is none. Let me explain to you why. All four of these devices live inside of this bag. If this bag were to get lost, although I have four copies, I have no backups. A backup, in essence, is something that stays in a single location. Mm -hmm. So we have those four copies here. We're going to take a fifth copy and put it on this desktop computer right here, this iMac desktop <coughs> computer right here. We have five copies, but how many backups do we have? One. One. Anything that stays in a single location can be a backup. Does that make sense to us? If it stays in a single location, it is a backup. If it moves around, it is a copy. When you are moving this computer from one location to the other, is it a backup? Yeah. No. no. Because it's moving. It's, it's, so what's very important, I have crew members all the time that say, oh, I have my backup hard drive and I dropped it and I lost my entire life. And I look at them and I say, you didn't drop your backup hard drive, you dropped your copy. Do we understand the concept behind what's a backup and what's a copy? Because what I want to show you is I want to show you my backups. Now I have two backups. And it's very strange. I used to have these backups in my cabin, and then I moved them upstairs because so many people started asking me questions about it. All of my backups, all of my pictures, all of my everything stay in a single location. But I have laptops and phones and all of those like that, so how do they stay in a single location? Yeah, how do they? I have a pair of hard drives that stay in a single location. They are called Thing 1 and Thing 2. They are kept under lock and key. Only me and my assistant have the key. I'm going to show you Thing 1 and Thing 2 so you can see what they are. They're in my cabin right here. It's on the screen. You should be able to see them. So here is thing one, thing two. That is my backup. That is a backup because it stays in a single location. So every time I'm in the eye lounge, my phones and my tablets and my laptops and everything back up to thing one and thing two. Those are backup hard drives. How many of us have a backup hard drive? How many of us have a backup hard drive that we carry around? It's not a backup hard drive, it's a copy. I want to be very clear. Only things that stay in a single location are allowed to be called backups. Does that make sense to everyone in the room? Okay. So, do we all have a desktop computer or a laptop that acts as a desktop at home? Yes. 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 Does anybody not have one of those? Okay. So we all have something that stays in a single location at home. It can be either a laptop or a laptop that acts as a desktop. We agree on that assumption? Yes. 
that can be where we put all of our stuff. So that is our that is our main repository for all of our stuff. That is a and it stays in a single location. Now, hopefully hooked up to that computer, you have a hard drive. A backup hard drive, yes? So if you have a backup hard drive, well you should, we'll talk about this in a minute. If you have a backup hard drive, yeah. I've just seen the news. Sorry. You what happened? The news just flashed up. Roger Moore has just died. Oh, has he? He just flashed up on your screen. I'm sorry, it's just like Roger Moore. day for British people. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to... It's quite a nightmare. I'm going to stop the news from coming, but uh, yeah, no, no, no worries. No worries. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully we'll solve the photo problem. We can't solve uh, any other problems. Now, I, I, so imagine if you have a hard drive plugged into a computer. Now, that hard drive stays plugged into the computer, and it stays in a single location, right? So it stays in a single location. How many backups do you then have? One. Two. You have two backups because you have two things that are staying in a single location. <coughs> Here's the important thing. Every... Backup is a copy, but not every copy is a backup. Does that make sense? So every backup is a copy, but not every copy is a backup. Here's the biggest problem, though. You have a computer at home, and you have a backup hard drive, or thing one, or thing two, or something like that, right? You have a computer at home, you got a backup hard drive, thing one, thing two, some variable like that, then you have two copies. But are they in the same location? Yes. Yes. Fire in the house, what happens? Both. You've lost both. So we're going to get into my backup theory, but I think we now all understand what a backup versus a copy is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the front page of your, your handout, which says, get going with Google Photos, the cheat sheet, it says, remember 322. For everything you care about and you cannot reproduce, which is mainly your photos, your videos, and your documents, am I correct in that assumption? Your movies and your music, you can always get. It's just money or, you know, it's not something that you can't, we get. For everything that you can't re-get, you want to have three backups of, at least three backups of, in two different locations on two different backup types. Now let's talk about something that happened in the middle of last cruise. And you would be familiar with this. We had a, um, we had a lot of the, uh, remember the ransomware attacks that happened? Yeah. Yeah. That they got all the computers? Here's the important thing to understand. We've got this computer that let's say is running Windows, and we've got the hard drive that's running Windows. What happens to all the files on there? They're all encrypted. They're all gone. So I want you to understand that when I say it, I say three backups in two different physical locations, but they need to be in two different backup types. What do I mean by that? So have any of you ever burned photos to a disk? Yes. Burn it to a CD? Yes. A CD is generally read-only, meaning you burn the photos to a disk, and no virus can really get to it because the photos are, are, there. are there. They're on the disk. Nothing can write to it. Nothing can destroy what's on the disk. Does that make sense to all of us there? So what I do is I take all my pictures and I burn them to a Blu-ray disk. I put them on a Blu-ray disk. Now, this is not something every one of you should do, but I take 50, 60, 70 gigs of pictures a contract. Because remember, I don't go to Copenhagen once. I go to Copenhagen seven times over the summer. I won't be here this summer, but last summer, I went to Copenhagen seven times over the summer. So I have 50 or 60 gigs. You want to make sure it's safe and in a different medium. For you, you should not be burning it to a Blu-ray disc. What you should be looking at is you should be looking at the cloud. So you should be looking at the cloud. So we all have at home a computer of some sort, and if you get a hard drive, any hard drive will work. Now, I can lie to you right now. This right here is my backup hard drive. Is somebody willing to call me out on that? It's not the size of the drive that matters. It's how you use it. But this right here is my backup hard drive. Why is it not my backup hard drive? Is it with me right now? I move it around. Thing one and thing two used to be in my cabin. When I moved thing one and thing two up here, I will tell you, one of the hard drives inside thing one and thing two got damaged. I fixed it, but while it was damaged, did it count as a backup? No. No. So I was actually down a backup. I was down a backup. So what I want to do is I want to talk about how to backup the most important thing you have on your phone and tablet, which is? Pictures. Your pictures and your video. So it's your pictures and your video. Now there are other services that allowed you to back up before. Some of you have probably heard of something called Flickr. You ever heard of Flickr? F-L-I-C-K-R? So it was run by Yahoo. It was a backup thing and uh, obviously it was run by Yahoo. So uh, we know where that's gone. Now there's another way to back up your photos which is with Amazon. Now this is not technically free. Just as the Apple backup is not free, it's called Prime Photos. 
this is not what we're talking about today, but I want to let you know other things that will do it. This is called Prime Photos, and as long as you're an Amazon Prime user, it will back up all of your photos to your Amazon Prime account, unlimited, for free. The problem is, why doesn't Apple give you unlimited storage on iCloud? Any of you know why? Because they can charge. But because Apple is a product company, not a services company. Google and Facebook are services companies. They don't generally have physical products, does that make sense? What I'm going to show you in the last time we meet in here, on the last C-Day at 330, I'm going to show you some products that Google's actually made. So Google's actually started making some products. But the thing is, Google is generally a services company. Now, what I'm about to show you with Google Photos is going to back up all of your photos, back up all of your videos across all of your devices, unlimited for free. And here's the question, why would Google do that when Apple wants to charge you $2.99 or whatever? And honestly, for that $2.99, you don't really have your pictures all the way across everything. You're not, do you feel really secure if I were to take your phone and sledgehammer it right now that everything will be backed up? No. I'll ask you an honest question. No. I feel, I feel, sure. I feel that secure. That's how secure I feel. And she went to a hotel. Did you get everything backed up in the hotel? Or she did. So she is now all of her pictures from her Windows computer. If she were to get that virus right now, she was on two cruises ago. If she were to get that virus right now on her Windows computer, she feels secure. I know none of you in this room can make that statement other than my friend here and me here. So what I want to show you is I want to show you how all of this works. I want to show you from scratch how all of it works. So to start with, I am not going to use my phone. I'm going to use my iPad. The reason I'm using my iPad is my iPad is completely empty. So my iPad has nothing on it. It's completely empty and why, because this is my work iPad, this is a giant iPad, I don't know why anybody needs an iPad this big, but that's a story for another day. This is, yes, this is actually an iPad. Some people don't believe it. Someone took, they, they took the iPad, they put it in the explosion ray, and they, yeah. they blew it up. Well, what I want to show you is I want to show you setting up Google Photos from scratch. Now, how many of us are iPhone, iPad people? Anybody Android? Okay, okay. Android as well as iPhone, iPad, or just Android? Okay, that's fine. I'm just wondering. So this is on Android as well. On Android, it's just called Photos. It's not called Google Photos. It's just called Photos because it's the Photos application. But what happens is to get it on an iPhone or an iPad, you need to go to the App Store, which is right here, and you'll look for Google Photos. Here's the important thing. On your iPhone or iPad, it will not generally be the first thing you get when you search Google Photos. And you're going, why? And it's because Apple has started to sell ads. They no, no, not ad. it's not Apple. No, Apple started to sell ads in the App Store. So this is an ad for some simple photo booth, which is like a photo booth you could set up at weddings. And they always advertise against Google Photos to give you a concept. But it's the second one there. And to get Google Photos, you'll need your Apple password. Now it is very important, and you'll understand why. Uh, it is very important if you are from the UK, and I'm going to explain this later on. We set up Google Photos for you on board the ship before you leave. If you're from the UK, that does not mean we need to do it today. We need to do it tomorrow. Just sometime before you get off the ship in Southampton. And all from the US, it doesn't matter. But from the we will set it up. But I'm saying we need yeah. to see all the UK people. It will make sense when I get deeper into it. Sure. And you're going to download that app. When we download it here. Thing one and thing two actually have copies of Google Photos on them. So if you download it in here, which after this class I'm going to give you the network password for in here, it'll download like that because we keep a local copy of it on the ship and it just, your phone communicates and just whoop, and then it does it really, really quickly to give you a concept there. But I've got Google Photos. When I do it, I'm going to, when it loads, it's going to say open. So herein lies the fun part. All of your photos. Backed up safely, organized and labeled automatically, so you can find them fast. Sounds too good to be true. It does. I'm going to show you that it's not. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get started, and Google Photos is going to ask me a very dumb question. Google Photos wants to access your photos. Can it? Yes. It has to ask you that question because of lawyers. That's why it needs to ask you the question. It needs to ask you the question because lawyers say. Then it's going to say, can Google Photos notify you when it finds something or it does something or it does other things like that? And you could say, sure. You can notify me and you can allow it. It's not going to go crazy. Then it's going to ask for your Google account. Google slash Gmail slash YouTube. How many of us have one of them already? How many of us don't? Okay, yeah, your Android people, you definitely have one. We will set one up for you the best we can. If you do not have one, come see us one day when we are in port either in the morning or in the afternoon, because generally we need to get a text message 
to set up a Gmail account on your phone. So we can generally only do that when we're in port. We're here in the port mornings and in the port afternoons as well. Uh, either an hour before we get into port, an hour before we get into the port, you'll see it there. And then it's going to ask you another question that's a dumb question, but there's a reason it asks you the dumb question. It's going to say, do you want to back up your photos and videos to this Google account? So if you have multiples, it's going to ask you to choose which Google account. You say yes, and here's the first non-dumb question. You're not going to see this non-dumb question on every one of your devices. You will only see it on your devices that have cellular data on it. So if you have an iPad that's only Wi-Fi, you're not going to get asked this question. It's going to say, do you want to use cellular data to back up your photos and videos? And the right answer is generally, no. 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 I don't have the button. But the right answer is generally, no. I say, yes, because I have unlimited data, and I have unlimited data roaming. It sounds like a pipe dream, but I, I actually do that. I used 175 gigs of data in Europe last year, because T-Mobile gave me free unlimited data roaming all over Europe, and I just... I just went crazy last summer. Uh, if you didn't have that, you would pay more than the ship cost in data roaming charges. It w I calculated it would have been like two or three hundred million dollars in data roaming I did last uh, I think we at, at at t Who do you have, T-Mobile? AT&T. AT you have unlimited at home, yeah. So my, my theory is, if you have unlimited, and you actually have unlimited, check that you do before you do this, watch it burn. Remember I told you all the cell phone networks are just uh, the filtering? It's, Cell phone networks aren't going to exist much well, longer. They, they keep on asking you to change. Oh, you don't want to change. You don't want to change. Got, want to change. Yeah. No, don't, don't, don't give them the satisfaction. But for most of us, we want to leave the cellular data back up off. And then it's going to say, this is the important variable. What size do we want to upload our photos? Just so you know, this is all tracked right on the, the sheet. Like I actually. So what size do you want to upload your photos? And there are two choices, high quality and original. And there's a button that says get help deciding. It brings you to this long terms and conditions thing that you're like, I don't want to read this crap. Uh, high quality means it's going to upload your pictures up to 16 megapixels. So you only have a 12 megapixel camera on your phone, so 16 megapixels is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Now what happens if you upload a 22 megapixel photo? You can grab that stool, you can put that on the... On the no, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying. Uh, so what happens if you have a 22 megapixel photo? It's going to crunch it down to 16. Now, I did a little unscientific test last time I was home. I took a panorama photo, and I printed it at Costco. You know the big prints you can get at Costco? I think you know in the UK, too. You get, like, poster prints at Costco. I printed it at Costco, and I took that picture, uploaded it to Google Photos, re-downloaded it, and then printed it again. You couldn't tell the difference. You couldn't tell the difference between, uh, between the two types. So 16 megapixels is more than enough for printing or anything like that, even in a poster print. So the right answer is high quality. Now, until I hit this button continue right here, when I hit this button continue, something very interesting is going to happen. All of my pictures and all of my videos from across all of my devices that are signed into Google Photos are going to wind up on this iPad. Now, unlike the way Apple does it, when Apple does it, if you run out of space, you're going to run out of space on your devices because it's synchronizing all the stuff over. Google Photos streams them in a thumbnail, and then when you click on it, it brings down the full resolution image. So it's kind of like a Netflix for your personal photos, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go in, and right now it's actually pulling it in, and I'll see today. And I have five pictures from today. And these should look very familiar. Now you notice it's a little frosted there. Mm -hmm. Give it a second. A couple seconds. It's pulling out a lot of stuff. And boom. I click on that picture. That one's actually already cleared up because it's pulling them down. But even this one, give it a couple seconds, and it will, <coughs> it will clean up, and boom, it's cleaned up. Now, not only do I have the picture that I took on my iPhone, I have pictures from across everything. So I install Google Photos on every mobile device I have. We're getting to computers in a couple of minutes' time. I'm going to show you how to do this on the computer. I want you to understand mobile devices first. So I install Google Photos on my Android phone. I, so, so I'll tell you, in low light, this is where this becomes useful. In low light, the camera on my Android phone is far better than the camera on my iPhone in low light, uh, but in good light, the iPhone camera is better than the Android camera. So I, I have one unified camera roll across everything. So this iPad was empty until 30 seconds ago, and as soon as I hit continue, wow. it got it right there. This will work, the, the important thing to understand is this is truly cross-platform. So this will work on Windows, Mac, iPhone, iPad, Android, everything out there this will work on. 
Now, what I've shown you is I've shown you setting up an empty device. What I want to do now is I want to show you my full device and my primary camera, which is my iPhone. So my full device and my primary camera, which is my iPhone. Now, some of you have probably seen the Photos app before on an iPhone or an iPad. And I'll show you one of my favorite messages I got in the Photos app. I got this in Southampton. Uh, it, I got this question, which you get, uh, I did not get the walk grill question. I got this question. When I updated my iPhone, it said, do you want to use the iCloud Photo Library? I'm sure you've all gotten this before. And there's a big button that says use iCloud Photo Library. And there's a little button that says not now. So as human nature, what did we click? The large one. We hit the large button. And that's why we've all run out of space on our iCloud. I want us to fully understand Google Photos. We're going to examine the iCloud problem a bit later on. But what I have is I actually have the ability to free up space on my device using Google Photos. This works on both iPhone and Android. So you can actually free up space on your device. So when you open Google Photos on the device you've taken the pictures on, which is primarily this phone, I go up to the upper left-hand corner where these, these three little bars, and there's a function that says free up space. This is still on the front of the sheet. It's still on the front. Okay. Yep, there's a button that says free up space. And when I click it, it's going to look for items that have already been backed up. And it's going to say, 8,083 items. Do I want to remove them from my phone? I'm going to read you this sentence and add a sentence after it of my own. Do you want to remove 8,083 items? These photos and videos have already been safely backed up to your Google Photos library at the quality you've selected, which is high quality. high quality. You'll be able to view them here at any time. I'm adding a sentence. I'm adding a sentence as long as you have some form of internet connection. So you are removing these photos from your device and you'll be able to stream them back to your device as long as you have Wi-Fi or a cellular connection. Does that make sense to everybody? If I were to hit this button on an Android phone and hit remove, it would remove all the pictures automatically. If I were to hit this button on an iPhone, something different happens. It says, do you want to allow Google Photos to delete 8,329 items? Now you'll notice that's more than 8,008. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have burst photos, which have multiple photos inside of them. It's counting every single item. So there's 272 photos from 26 bursts. So that's why that number is much higher. Because we have that many things from the 26 bursts and 8,057 other items. When I hit delete, it will not delete them directly on my iPhone. It will, only do, it will send them to the garbage can. So on your iPhone, you have an album called Recently Deleted. Mm -hmm. And inside of Recently Deleted, it's like a ticking time bomb. It goes down. And if, you, if you need the space, you need to go into Recently Deleted, hit Select, and then say Delete All, if you've got multiples there. Then that will free up the space on your device. This is not something you need to do. This is an option. I have a 256 gig iPhone. But I also have, I'm going to tell you, I also have only a 64 gig Samsung phone. And there was a concert that I went to last week and I took a whole bunch of video in 4K and my Samsung phone has essentially run out of storage. So I went to the Samsung phone, I hit free up space, took all the pictures that were already there, they're already in the cloud, they're already saved, they are backed up. Does that make sense to everyone there? Now, Google Photos is going to show you your photos and videos in a very interesting order. It's different than you would see it on your iPhone. On your iPhone, the newest stuff is at the bottom. When you look at it, and normally in your, in your Galaxy camera roll, I think the newest stuff is at the bottom normally as well. It's not at the top. In Google Photos, the newest things are always at the top. What if you wanted the newest things to be at the bottom? Tough. Uh, they're always at the top. <laughs> Let's just be honest. They're the tough noogies. They're always at the top. So your newest items are always at the top. It is going to take a long time to upload your photos and your videos. Let's just... Let's just be completely honest. It is going to take a long time. It will take, you're fully finished in the hotel? Well, yeah, you said it. Great. Uh, for every thousand items you have to back up, it takes about a day. Just to give you a, a concept. So for every thousand items you have to back up, it takes about a day to do it. And unfortunately, I talked about Google Photos so much on the ship that I've had to limit the upload speed for Google Photos for the entire ship. Because if everybody was doing it, it would break the entire ship. Because I talk about it, everybody's like, oh, let's go download Google Photos. And when I was talking about this last year, <laughs> I get a call from my satellite company. It's like, 
why are 300 people uploading to Google Photos right now? <laughs> so we put a little cap on the ship, so it's not as quick in uploading on the ship, but at home, it'll take about 1,000 photos a day and upload them. Uploading is a lot slower than downloading, so you actually have to put them up in the cloud in their full quality. It's going to upload every single photo you have before it uploads a single special photo, which is a burst or a panorama or anything like that, or a single video. So it's going to upload everything before it does any of those others. And when you get it on your phone, it's still got one item to back up. It will say, backup complete. It's got one item left to back up. It says backup complete. Now, I got a little bottleneck. I had like 6,000 pictures that needed to upload from my phone. And I happened to go to a concert hall that we were in last Kurs, and I connected to their Wi-Fi, and it, uh, they had a very good connection. And it brought all of my pictures up. In about six hours, I had everything in the Harpa. You know what I'm talking about? So I got, I got access to the secret network in this concert hall that we went to. That we had a concert in Las Cruz, and uh, I got all my pictures uploaded across all my devices. So I have everything loaded. Now, just to give you a concept, I want to show you something cool that Google Photos actually did. I told you I took a whole bunch of videos of a concert last week. Watch this, because this is very, very cool. I need to find it real quick. Is it actually automatically put that together into a movie? Really? Yeah, I'm looking for it. Let me try to find it. I was like, Google Photos did something really cool. I posted it on Facebook. I just don't know where I put it. Yeah, yeah so it automatically will put things together. Uh, let me go to videos. I know I didn't delete this. It'll construct videos and photos together. Right? Yes, it will constrict. It'll put videos and photos together. I'm just looking for where my videos are. Uh, I guess, oh, here we go. So I did not do what you're about to see. I didn't do. Google Photos put this all together, put it to music, did everything like that. I don't know how well it's going to stream like that because it's wirelessly streaming, wirelessly streaming. It's probably a really bad idea to put it on the screen. Doing a video like that is a really weird thing. Uh, I'll show you on my computer a bit later. But it's actually going to, uh, to stream that. Let me, let me, if I can drop it real quick. I'm going to airdrop it to my computer. Baked Alaska? No. iLounge class. No, that's not me iLounge iMac Manager. Eh. I have enough things that are open and ready to go, but it will put things together, and that's what we're going to start talking about. We're going to talk about you know, putting things together and doing all kinds of things like that. But now what I want you to do is, do we have any questions on how we upload from our phones and our tablets? We're going, I want to go to computers now. That's where I want to go. I want to go to the back side of the sheet where we're going to talk about uploading to computers. You have a computer in front of you. Go ahead and shake the mouse on your computer. You might need a password. It is a very easy password I will give you. The password is in a single word, I love Google. If you have what I have, then you're fine. Single word, I love Google. Yeah, no spaces, and just hit enter. There we go. So this is the main interface, I-L-O-V-E. -E. So this is the main interface of Google Photos. This is where I want us to stay for now. This is the main screen of Google Photos. Do we see it over there? I can't see your screens. That's why I asked. Okay, some rules to what we're going to do. Do you see where it says Google Photos in the upper left-hand corner and where those three little bars are? Yes. Do you see where the R is in the upper right-hand corner? Yes. At no point in this class are we going to click above that. Does that make sense? We're not going to be going up to the web browser. We're not going to be going up in any, anywhere there. So you see this giant white box? Watch my finger. And there's a big white box that surrounds the photos. Mm -hmm. We don't leave that white box. This is a website. Now, to get to your photos on the computer, you're going to go to, there is no app for your computer. You just go to the website. It's on the back of your paper. Yep, it says photos.google.com. That's where you are right now. It's you're on the Google Photos website. You can do this from a Windows computer. You can do this from a Mac. You can do this from whatever device you want to. You go to photos.google.com, and we are on the Google Photos website. Now, your Google Photos thing was opened before I took those three pictures of you. That's why those are not there. If I were to, I'm just going to do this. Don't follow me along. But if I refresh that page, then you'll see I now have all five photos from the day. This is instantaneous backup. That's what's cool. When you do an iCloud backup, iCloud will only back things up if it's plugged in, connected to Wi-Fi, and the screen is off. Google Photos has solved the photo problem on Apple that Apple couldn't solve on their own devices. 
Here's the question though. Okay, the most recent year or so of photos that you have are inside of your phone, your, phone, your tablet. But where are your older pictures? They are on your computer, on your hard drives, on your flash drives, on your SD card, on different things like that. So how do we get that stuff up to the cloud? So you see these little three bars in the upper left hand corner? That's the equivalent of a file menu in Google Photos. You're going to click on those little three bars right there. You can do this. You can follow along. You click on those little three bars in the upper left-hand corner, and you'll see something that says App Downloads. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to click App Downloads in the bottom right-hand corner. Bottom right-hand corner. Left-hand corner. Sorry. This is the... Uh... So... Do not click it, but you'll see there's a button that says download. Do we see that? Most of us will see that. So we click app downloads and then download. Your computer's just said, no thank you. It's not super important. Uh, so no, don't click it. You don't need to click it. On your computer at home, though, you will click it. If it is a Windows computer, it will automatically download the Windows version of the software. If it is a Mac computer, it will automatically download the Mac version of the software. This software is not designed for viewing your photos and videos. It is designed for uploading your photos and videos to the Google Cloud. So it's going to download this piece of software. It is called the Google Photos Uploader. Or actually, they have a fancier name for it. They just call it Google Photos Backup now. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the button that I should have hit. I hit the wrong button. So you download this on your computer. If it is a Windows computer, it's going to run by the time in the bottom right hand corner. If it's a Mac computer, it's going to run up on the top menu bar. And here's what's going to happen. It is going to say, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to make it big. It's going to say, Google Photos, automatically back up photos and videos from your computer, including hard drives and memory cards. So we'll hit continue here, and then we're going to sign in with our Google account. Hopefully the same Google account that we had used in the last step with our phones on our tablets. So Richard at, I think I got that. Uh, R-I-C-H-A-R-D at G-O, oh, there's two H's there. And then I put in my password, which I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> it's not password. <laughs> it's P4S dollar sign, no, no, it's not that. And I hit sign in. The next thing it's going to ask me is a very hard question for a lot of you in this room. Where are your pictures on your computer? <laughs> now, the answer most people give me, I have to prepare to say this because sometimes I say it wrong, is they say they are in what you would statistically call a fuster cluck. <laughs> if you didn't get that, reverse the letters and we got it. Yeah, fuster cluck. Just a mess of photos. Now, some of us will be fortunate enough to have them in a program. If you have a Mac, you have them in either Photos or iPhotos. If you have a Windows computer, you might have them in Google Photos already. Well, in what used to be, what Google Photos became called Picasa. You ever use Picasa? Mm -hmm. It might be in Picasa. It's going to identify where your pictures may be. So it's going to say, okay, these pictures may be here, they may be here, they may be here, they may be there. It's going to identify where your pictures should actually be. Since it's an Apple machine, it's going to find the Apple Photos library to give you a concept. So Windows machine, it's going to find your My Pictures folder. It is automatically going to find folders inside folders inside folders inside folders inside folders. Do not choose your entire C drive because then you're going to get all the icons for your Windows programs and stuff there. So just choose things that have photos and videos inside of them and it will automatically back up everything in there. It's going to ask what size do you want to upload them? High quality. Yes? Uh huh. On your computer. Aha, duplicates. Yes. Duplicates. Oh, she had to ask about the duplicates. Okay. So duplicates are really, really interesting. It will not copy duplicate photos and upload the duplicate photos. It is not going to fix your duplicate mess though. So it's not going so if you have a mess, it's not going to fix it. Now let me tell you something I did, and we will elaborate further on this. I just want to get this in your brain right now. We're going to elaborate further on this the last time we meet on the last C day. I uploaded all of my pictures to Google Photos, right? Mm -hmm. I let Google Photos organize them, and then I re-downloaded them, and that's my main photo library now. So you can use it to eliminate duplicates, 
but you have to do it the smart way. I'm going to show you how to do that through an application called Google Drive. When we go, go further with Google, we're going to talk about Google Drive, uploading things to YouTube, different things like that. But for today, I just want us to get the base concept of Google Photos. Now, this application will also allow you, every time you pop in a memory card, every time you pop in an SD card to the machine, it's going to say, do you want to back up these photos to Google Photos automatically? Yeah. So we're closed for a class right now. The internet will be back open after 5 p.m. After 5 p.m. So it's going to be back open after 5 p.m. Yes, we're closed for a class right now. We'll be back open after 5 p.m. for internet usage. Okay, so when you pop in an SD card, it's going to say, do you want to back up these photos to Google Photos? Let me tell you the problem with that, though. Your computer can't tell the difference between an SD card and a flash drive and this and that. So anytime you pop in something, it's going to pop up and say, do you want to back it up to Google Photos? And you can say, no, never, or yes. If, they, if you say never, it's never going to bother you with that device again. Does that make sense there? Not only will it upload to Google Photos, it can also copy it to your computer. And hopefully plugged into your computer, you have a hard drive. Has Google Photos solved the 322 problem automatically? Because you're uploading it to Google Photos, you have it on your computer, which is the first backup, and you have it on your hard drive, which is the second backup. That 322 is at a minimum, okay? That's a minimum. So I have like 524 or something. Like I have, I have five something four. And so we've got all that. Now I'm going to talk to one or two people in this room right now. Yeah. Just one question. Yeah, if please. you put in card uh -huh. and you, it, you, you automatically back up your uh -huh. photograph, then you put the SD card back in. It's going to automatically skip the duplicates, yes. Oh, right. It's going to skip the... Like if you put more on there... No, it's, it's, it's back no. So here's the thing it'll ask you. When you import those photos, it'll ask you if you want to skip the duplicates, and you say skip duplicates, and then you'll be okay. But it's never going to upload a duplicate either via name or actual file. Mm -hmm. So when we look at my pictures in a minute, there were two pictures I took yesterday of the ice cream that looked nearly duplicate, but I saw there was a leg, and the leg was in different positions there, so I knew it actually wasn't a duplicate. So it analyzes the actual file and figures out what's a duplicate there. I'm going to talk to two or three people in this room right now for about five seconds, if it makes no sense. If you shoot in RAW, does anybody shoot in RAW? Am I talking to anybody that makes any sense too? Okay, then don't worry about it. Uh, but I'll tell you what I was going to say. RAW, big sexy cameras shoot photos in a slightly different way, which is called RAW. If you shoot in RAW, you want to shoot in RAW plus JPEG, and it'll upload the JPEG. If you don't shoot in RAW, nobody in this room shoots in RAW. We don't need to have that discussion. It's an option that's right there. But now what we've done is we've set the gears in motion to get all of our pictures in all of our pictures and videos into Google Photos. Herein lies the question though, now what? Good question, right? They're there. They're there. We have them backed up, yeah. Can I just say, I, some of my photos are in the document file. Uh-huh. So would... Yes, so you would choose the documents folder and it would back up all of the JPEG images in the documents folder. Okay. It would ignore all of the documents. Now, what we're going to talk about is something called Google Drive later on in the cruise that will back up your documents as well. Here's what you need to realize. If any of you used Dropbox or anything like that before? Yeah. Yeah. You store your photos? Yeah. The problem is all of those use storage, and they store your photos in its original quality. What Google Photos does is they crunch your photos down to about a tenth of the size while retaining 90% of the quality. That's the kind of cool thing. That's how they can go about doing this. Is they crunch them down to about a tenth of the size while retaining a full 90% of the quality there. So, I want to show you what we do once we get them uploaded. This is the most time I've ever had to show you what we do, so this is good. So do you see where it says app downloads? Do you see that little white arrow? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and hit that little white arrow up in the upper left-hand corner there. Now, do we all understand? And I just, if you don't understand, I'm happy to go over anything again. Do we all get the basic concept of how we do this from our phones and our tablets and our computers? That entire concept is written down here. Also on my website, which I'll give you later on, is a video of this class. There's like six videos of this class because I do it every single cruise, and I'll give you the, the website later on. Don't worry about that. That's what this camera is. I'm going to explain this camera tomorrow, but it's an awesome camera. It does some awesome things. But this is how you set it up. What is not on this sheet is what we're about to do. It is up here in a little paragraph. Don't read it because we're going to do it, but it's, I'm, just, I'm saying... It's up here in a little paragraph, but what we're about to do is very fluid. And they add new things all the time to what we're about to do. That's why it's not written down, if that makes sense. It's, it's very fluid. They change these things all the time. So this is the main page. I'm going to go to where you should all be so we can make sure. 
This is the main page of my Google Photos. It has all of my photos and all of my videos from across all of my devices. Click back on that little, uh, oh, you can just, I, I mean, you don't have it because I, I gave you a little bit of time. Okay, so this has all of our photos and all of our videos from across all of our devices. Now, what it's gonna show is it's gonna show, you see it says today, and it says yesterday, and if I were to scroll a little bit, it'll say May 21st, and it'll say all of these different dates. So it won't say yesterday, tomorrow, it'll say May 22nd, if that makes sense. It tries to humanize the photo experience slightly. But when you're talking about Google, if you have to say what Google did in one word, give me that one word, what Google does to describe what they do. Google. Search. Search. So everything that you've seen already can theoretically be done, theoretically, by paying Apple $2.99 a month. But this is where it verges from Apple and goes to cuckoo crazy town, okay? So we actually have a search box on the top. Now Google's goal is to know what you want to search before you even know you want to search it. That's their goal. So you'll notice, very strangely, it's actually recommending a search. It says search and then something. You see that there? If you look on your screen, it'll say slightly different things. Mine says search Christmas. What's yours say? Search Hollywood. Search Hollywood, search all these different things. It's actually recommending a search. And if we click on that search box, not the one all the way on the top, the search box that says search and then something, we are going to have not just one search, but we're gonna have a recommendation of three searches. So go ahead and click, and follow along now. Go ahead and click there. Yeah, don't click on one of the search, click on the search box and you'll see those searches right there. Now, you will actually have a recommendation of three different searches showing up there. Now what's amazing, does anybody have like Estonia or Stockholm or something like that? Bergen, Bergen yeah. So it knows locations, it knows all of these different things. Once we get our photos uploaded to Google Photos, Google Photos artificial intelligence figures out what's in them, where they are, everything like that. It can read text on buildings. I'm going to show you all of this. There is just one thing you need to do to make Google Photos work for you, and that is name your people, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. Here is the problem. Naming people is not available in the United Kingdom. But... There's a hack. That's why we need to set up the UK people on board. If you were to set up your account in the United Kingdom due to UK online child pornography laws, you cannot do visual identity on faces that cannot be confirmed to be at least 18 years of age, which Google Photos cannot comply with that, so unfortunately they just have to shut off the facial recognition. If we turn on facial recognition outside of the UK, when you get back to the UK, you will have facial recognition, if that makes sense. That's why we need to see, we need to set up Google Photos for the UK people. For the States people, it's not super relevant, but we'll set up Google Photos for you as well. I'm just making that statement. Even if you already have it installed, we have a way to do it because you have photos, Google Photos on your device already. We have a way to hack it around. Myself or Orlando can get you going on that one day before the end of the cruise. But you'll see we get our faces right here. The easiest way to name faces, in my personal opinion, is on a computer. You can technically do it on a phone. Yeah? So if you do it on one device, Yes. If you do it on one device, what we do is, I'll tell you exactly what we do. I'm going to show you later in the cruise, because it's part of another class we do. We're going to talk about an advanced apps class, where we're going to talk about VPN. You've probably heard of VPN before. It's how you trick your location. So what we do is we VPN to the United States, and then we open your Google Photos in the US, we enable facial recognition, and then it, di it goes across your whole account. It's a good trick. Uh, so, you see we have these faces that are showing right here, and you see a little black arrow to the right of the last face. Do you see that? Yes. Go ahead and click on that little black arrow while I grab a sip of water. So this is gonna load up all of your faces, all of your people in your Google Photos. <laughs> Give it a second. It's got a lot to load. But in, a, in about, oh, she's got it. She's got it. Give it a couple seconds. Mine will load. Yours will load. It's going to upload. It's going to find all of the faces. Now, it will show the, per the people that you've taken the most pictures of first. You only need to name each person one time. And they actually have, to tell you how crazy Google Photos is, they have geneticists working for Google Photos that look at people over time and figure out what people look like over time. You're going to see this in a couple of minutes. It's, it's, it's crazy. But to show you, like, you see that wall right there? Do you see that woman on the iPod Touch on the wall? We've named her iPod Touch Woman 
<laughs> and every picture I've taken in the eye lounge, every picture I've taken in here, that's got a picture of her across multiple ships. Oh You'll see, there's iPod Touch Woman. <laughs> and whether it's a side picture, that's from like nine different ships. I've got iPod Touch Woman. Now, not only will it recognize her in pictures, it will recognize her in videos as well, just to give you that concept. <laughs> so you're going to see all these pictures. It takes a long time to load these pictures, so just pay attention to my screen. It might catch up on yours in a couple seconds, but it's a, it's a little weird because it's a huge amount of data to load is if I pull down, you'll see people that are not named. So let's just pick on someone that's not named. I don't know who that person is. And it's going to ask you the question. It's going to say, who's this? I'll zoom in so we can see it real quick. It's going to say, who's this? Please don't do this because this is my actual library. So we're going to who's this? And we'll say, sister, friend. Some friend of my sister's. And as soon as I do that, that has assigned it to sister friend. So I don't have to hit save. I don't have to do anything like that. You need to go in and you need to name every single person that you care about. Now, there's people that you won't care about. Let's be completely honest. Just leave them alone. You see all these people? My, my computer will catch up in a few seconds. There's a lot of people that you don't care about. And the people that you don't care about, just leave them blank and let them go. Can you technically remove them? Yes, it's going to identify every single face you have in your library, though, to give you that concept. Those of you that see it saying people, I'm going to fix those of you that don't, that see it saying people in the upper left-hand corner, and see a little black arrow next to it, click on that. Just click the little black arrow. I want to get back to the main page of Google Photos. I'm going to get there. Give me a second. So it's always a, a fun challenge. Uh, no, give me a second. Let me get it going. Let me try and get this going. I'm gonna okay. Okay, I'm gonna get us back. I'll get us. I'm getting set. Okay. Yeah, we are nearly where we need to be. You will be there in a couple seconds. I'll get you. I'll get you. <laughs> We always anger it when we do this. <laughs> Go ahead and be click on, on photos right there. Yeah, you're fine. You're okay. I'm going to get another person. <coughs> okay. Oh, okay. He got caught up. Most of us are, are back ish there ish. I'll get her going. <laughs> No, it's okay. We loaded something really heavy. Okay. You're good. You're okay. You're okay. 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 So we should mostly be back on the main screen of Google Photos. I'm going to give it about 10 more seconds to get where I want it to go. Did yours catch up? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is the main screen of the Google Photos, and some of you that have refreshed, you see the three pictures there. So this is our main screen, and we have this search box. So we name the people, as I said, name the people. It's going to take a little bit for people to show up, but what we need to trick is on your app, on your phone, we need to make it say people, and it'll say group similar faces. You won't see that when you set it up. We will trick it to do it. You will not get it from the ship, so if you set up Google Photos for the first time on the ship, you won't see it. When you go to the U.S., you'll see it, but we'll, we can hack it so you get it when you're in Europe and different things like that. So. Here's our pictures right here, but we can go ahead and we can search for things over time, which become very interesting. So I want you to go ahead and go to the search box right at the top and just type in Richard, R-I-C-H-A-R-D. That's me. Okay. You know what you're doing. We go to the search box, we type in Richard, and we hit enter. And it's going to find, yeah, or you can just click on my face. That's easier. It's going to find all the photos of me. Give it just a second to load up. And just hit enter. Return. Yep. You hit return there. It's going to take a little bit because we're doing on a lot of different devices. Just click on me. I'm the first one there. So it's going to automatically find all the photos of me. Now, here's where this gets interesting. 
This is pictures of not just me, but me and other people. Now, if you notice, the first picture of me is on May 17th, which is like seven days ago or so. So I have a lot more pictures since then, but none of them contain me. I didn't tell it what contains me or anything like that, but what's cool is we can look at me and another person. So we can now type in Richard and Leslie. A-N-D, you need to type in the word and, L-E-S-L-I-E. And it's gonna find pictures of Richard and Leslie. Richard space, A-N-D-L-E-S-L-I-E. And it's very important that you do not use the ampersand sign and you use and. If you use the ampersand sign, weird things happen. Because it's actually programming. So we type in Richard, A-N-D-L-E-S-L-I-E. Now, here's something I need you to understand. All the pictures of Richard also contain all the pictures of Richard and Leslie. Does that make sense? So we're saying this is what's called an eliminative search. So when we have nothing in the search box, we're seeing every single picture. When we type something in the search box, we're eliminating down our picture choices. So now what I want to do is we understand how Richard, don't scroll down all the way. It'll, it'll get there. Just hit Richard and Leslie, hit enter. And L-E-S-L-I-E, -E, and it'll find that. But I want to get a little bit more eliminative. So we're going to go Richard and Leslie children. And press enter, and it's going to find all the pictures of Richard and Leslie as children. We never told it, I want to be very clear, we never told it what Richard and Leslie as children were. We just are typing in Richard and Leslie children. It automatically identified Richard and Leslie as children. They're working on, I show this children feature because as soon as they're to get it down, then they'll natively deploy facial recognition in the UK that makes sense but uh, I like to show it because it can actually identify people over time and we can get even more specific I want you to type in Richard and Leslie if it's even if it didn't load type in Richard and Leslie children ship s-h-i-p Richard and Leslie children ship and then we get Richard and Leslie as children on a ship could you reverse the order? Richard and Leslie as children of Richard and Leslie children. So we're really, in a sense, Richard and Leslie children is the way to do it. The, the less information you give, the better you can. Because you are writing computer programming language. It's taking what you're interpreting and it's figuring out what you're asking for in computer code. The le as, as strange as it sounds, the less words you have, the less chance it'll mess up. So I could just type in Richard and Leslie children ship and guess what we get? One picture. So we eliminated it down from 500,000 pictures and videos to a single picture. Now that used artificial intelligence to figure out that we were children and artificial intelligence to figure out what a ship was. Can you do that with any other piece of software? Probably not. No, I've never seen it. Yeah. <coughs> no, 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 no. All that was ever labeled was Richard and Leslie. I didn't label children, I didn't label ship. Just to show you something interesting though, if I were to get rid of the word children, I'll just do it on my screen. If I were to get rid of the word children, there's Richard and Leslie as adults mm -hmm. on a ship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's me, and that's Les. that's fat me, and that's Leslie, and that's fat mama. Oh, kill me. Um, we've all lost a lot of weight, so it's okay. And it's actually identified us as, and this is a video on the Oasis of the Seas, and I identified me and her inside of that video to give you the concept. Oh but let's take it one step further with my other sister. I want you to type in Richard and Julie, J-U-L-I-E. Get rid of uh, and Leslie ship, or just Richard J-U-L-I-E, Richard and Julie. And that's gonna find all of the pictures of Richard and Julie. Now understand we did name Richard, we did name Julie, Previously, when we did this, we named Richard and Julie, and it's automatically found all the pictures of Richard and Julie. Uh, something weird. We don't know. We're, we're not children ship, just Richard and Julie. How do I get this we're under a different backwards. variable for Richard and Julie. How did you get this backwards? Uh, delete. We'll go backwards. Oh. Okay. 
Put that down. Thank you. And we hit enter, and it finds all the pictures of Richard and Julie. But let's say we wanted Richard and Julie in a specific location. So I want Richard and Julie in New York. So type in Richard and Julie, New York. This is where things start getting crazy. So my question to you in the audience is, how does it know? How does it know? Mm, okay, good question. So if you have a phone, you likely have GPS on your phone, and your phone knows where you are based on GPS. But wait, what if I have Well, let me just make sure this iPad doesn't have it. This iPad does not have GPS on it. So I want you to learn this iPad doesn't have GPS on it. So here's the question. How does it know where the pictures are taken if the iPad doesn't have GPS on it? Because I'll tell you, it does know where the pictures are taken. Google Earth. Photo recognition. Google Earth, not really. Photo recognition we're going to get to in a minute. Um, but one of the ways it knows is, do you remember those cars that were driving around the street? The street view cars, they did that in the UK as well, right? The, the street view cars. When those cars drove down the street, they captured the name and serial number of every Wi-Fi address that was broadcasting. Whether or not it could connect to it or not, whether it needed a password, and it made a database called the Skyhook Wi-Fi database, which ties Wi-Fi networks to physical GPS locations. That is why if you post to Facebook from the ship, it will say that you're on the Celebrity Eclipse in Miami, Florida, because the Google Street View car drove by the ship in Miami, Florida last, captured Celebrity Wi-Fi from the ship in Miami, Florida, and even if your phone's not connected, when it sees Celebrity Wi-Fi with that same signature, it gets that address. Does that make sense to everybody? So when it sees Celebrity Wi-Fi with that same signature, it gets the address. you have to have that turned on on your iPhone? So you need to have location services. You need to let your phone see the location on your iPhone. We will double check that in a later class that's coming up. The cool thing is it does still work in airplane mode. It doesn't work as accurately, but it will find New York, it will find different things like that. Now, my friend over here said, well, what about stuff in the, well, actually, I got one more thing. If you buy a normal camera, then we'll go to your thing. If you buy a normal camera nowadays, most cameras now come with GPS on them. Mm -hmm. The new GoPro, stuff like that. If you're buying a new camera and it doesn't come with GPS, don't buy the camera, okay? <laughs> If you go down to the photo gallery and they're like, we got this great camera on a great deal, it's only $150. You look at them, you say, does it have GPS? They go, no, you go, no, thank you, okay? Because GPS has become very important for knowing where your pictures are taken. But your solution is actually very interesting. Now, I love to read, for, for fun, for skill, I read the terms and conditions that we agree to every day, okay? I read those. I love terms and conditions, they're amazing. And one of the terms and conditions inside of Google Photos says it can use your pictures to make other pictures smarter. And you're going, oh, that's not good. How many of you ever used Google Maps before? Yeah. You know that Google Maps is watching the people that are in front of you on the highway, seeing how fast they're going in the same direction you're going to tell you how long it's going to take you to get somewhere. It's in the terms and conditions. You just didn't read them. So it's, it's, what I'm trying to say is if you take a picture of your phone from the Empire State Building with GPS enabled, and I take a picture with my camera that doesn't have GPS, it can analyze what's in the background of the picture and add location tags to it based on what's in the background of the picture. Those are the four ways it can actually analyze. And we're going to get a lot more specific in a couple minutes when we look at something with Halloween to give you an idea of what's going on. But I want to get more specific. We've got Richard and Julie in New York. Now I want Richard and Julie in New York in the snow. So type in snow after New York. Now understand that this snow pictures exist within Richard and Julie New York. Does that make sense to everybody? They exist within there. We're just eliminating it down. This is an eliminative search. So we're eliminating search options inside of Google Photos. And we should get Richard and Julie. You'll catch up in a couple seconds. Richard and Julie in New York in the snow. In the snow. Well, now not in the snow. The less, so here's the simple answer. The less words you give it, the better. So I just did Richard and Julie, New York snow. Mm -hmm. Some things might be locking up or playing stupid. It's okay. Because we're doing this on 20 computers at the same time. But if we go Richard and Julie, New York snow, it should find us Richard and Julie, New York in the snow. And you'll see three pictures as well as a video. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Now, I'm going to get everybody caught up in a minute because sometimes, let me see what's going on. Let me see why you don't want to behave with me. That's okay. 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 Richard and Julie in New York snow. Oh, he's got a battery pack. Um, yep. Yeah. Ah, it just came, it came up for a lot of us now. Let me get everybody else back on this. Yeah, give me just a couple minutes time. Okay. Couple seconds time. So I find Richard and Julie in New York, in the snow. What do you have showing up there? I think it's just circling. It's just circling, yeah. That's what a couple people are doing because they kind of... Yeah, give it a second to catch up. It'll catch up. Watch my screen for a second while I'm waiting for yours to catch up because they're a little angry. Now, some people think that uh, animals are people too. And they go, well, can, can animals be identified in Google Photos? The cool thing is, I can go up to the search box, I'll get you guys caught up in a second, and I can type in, I used to have a dog that was a boxer. B-O-X-E-R. And I type in boxer, and it will find my boxer, but it will also find boxers like Muhammad Ali. <laughs> because I didn't define boxer dog. Now, for what we're going to do for the rest of the class, I want to be very clear. I never defined what these things were. Google Photos has used its own artificial intelligence to figure out what they are. And you'll see there's Mike Tyson. And he's a boxer. So I can type in boxer dog or I can type in my mom also had a Westie. Or a West Highland Terrier. And it actually finds the boxer and the Westie. So you can get both of them up at the same time. We can get Boxer, we can get Westie. I'll get those, those three in a second. But I can get both of them up at the exact same time, Boxer and Westie. So I can look up animals. Now, people always ask me, they go, can it get cats? <laughs> and I have a very simple response to that. Cats have no soul, so no. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> careful, truthful. What? Okay. So we can go in. I think the Google Photos is going to, there we go. She's, hers is okay. So what I want to do, I'm going to get something going in. Let me see. So she's okay. I want us to go to the search box right in the top. And I want you to type in, this is a very specific phrase. I'm going to make sure everybody gets there. We're going to type in Richard Halloween. Orlando. Richard Halloween. Yeah, just go to that one. I think one's okay there. Yeah. Yeah, get rid of that. You found the snow. Richard Halloween Orlando. You're making some of the stuff starting on yours. Yeah, no, I agree. But for this part, go ahead and follow along here. You'll learn some different stuff than you did last week. Okay, so here's a quick question for you. What is the date of Halloween? October 31st. This is September 26th. Aha! Uh -huh. It's October 31st, but it says September 26th. Why? Because that's when you went. Probably you were there then. But how does it know? How does it know that that was Halloween? It's not Halloween the sign. Yes, my friend. Google Photos can read. Oh my God. Google Photos can read. <laughs> They're not watching you. Yes, <laughs> see, it says Halloween. Can you see it? Halloween, can you see right there? And then see up here it says September 26th. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it says 25th. Yeah, you're exactly right. So it says September 26th, but it actually can read the sign and figure out that the word Halloween is there. Goodness. Now you'll notice that some of these pictures don't even have the word Halloween in it. How does it know? I'm sure most of us have heard of something called Google Maps before. Yeah? If you click on any of those Halloween pictures, just go ahead and click on any of those pictures there. Doesn't matter which one. And you click the little eye in the upper right hand corner. You see a little eye? Move your mouse and you see a little eye? Like a letter I in a circle. You see it there? Yes. Click on that. Yep, click on that. A letter I in a little circle. 
it's going to show you <coughs> where that picture was taken. Because this is tied in directly with Google Maps. And it was taken at Universal Studios during Halloween Horror Nights. So it's actually smart enough to know that. Now, why I didn't have you type in normal Richard Halloween is because you get pictures of me dressed as a woman. But that's something that nobody needs to see. It's a little too scary for today. It's a lot scarier than the clown. But we typed in Richard Halloween Orlando, and we found pictures of Richard in Halloween in Orlando, which is Halloween Horror Nights, which is pretty crazy to be able to do. But one of the reasons I really use Google Photos, now all you should do is move your mouse around, and you'll see in the upper left-hand corner of that picture, you'll see a little white arrow. Do you see that? Yes. Upper left hand corner of the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see the little white arrow? Click on the little white arrow. Upper left. Mm -hmm. So Google Photos comes into use a lot of time when I want to show someone a picture or something. I was sitting sure. with the with the team on reflection, the um, um, the ship reflection. I was sitting with the future cruise sales team and helping with something. <laughs> they go to me, hey Rich, we want to thank you. We're gonna take you out to sushi on five. And I go, sushi, that's disgusting. I don't like sushi. Now, I like some stuff at sushi on five, just not the sushi because raw fish is not my thing. And these girls that like sushi look at me and they go, the stuff you eat as an American is disgusting, not the sushi. And I'm like, excuse me, sweetheart, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh crap, she's right. So I want to show you something. We're going to look for a food that I ate. We're going to go ahead. One of my favorite food groups, one of the core food groups of Americans, is donuts. I know the British like that, too. Uh, so you can type in the word donut up on the top, and it's going to automatically find all the pictures. It does not matter how you spell it. It doesn't matter how you spell it. D-O-N-U-T, D-O-U-G-H-N-U-T. You type in donut. Oh, I took those donut pictures really recently. These are new donut pictures. I like it. Me and my assistant, you know when they have the shuttle buses to go to town? We don't do that. We walk to town, and then we find a donut shop on the way, and then we eat the calories we could have uh, <laughs> burned off by walking. That's in, uh, that's in Dublin. We found, <coughs> we found a donut place. We found a donut place in Guernsey. That's the Krispy Kreme in Southampton. That's a Chinese buffet from two days ago. I like donuts. To make your diet. <laughs> to lose weight. Uh, don't, don't worry about the diet. It's okay. It's against my diet. Okay. So, but I'm looking for a very specific donut. So I want to drill this down instead of searching through that. I want to find a donut in a specific location. So I want a donut in West Palm Beach. W-E-S-C-P-A-L-M-B-E-A-C-H. And we will see a fantastic donut. Uh-oh. Wow. It is not just a donut. Uh -huh. It is a Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburger yeah. donut. Wow. Exactly. Do you like it? <laughs> what? That is disgusting. Now, just so you know, there are two full donuts surrounding that bacon cheeseburger. Not one donut. Two. Two full donuts. Now, someone said, why not just slice a donut in half and put the cheeseburger in the middle? That's called structural integrity. You can't support a greasy cheeseburger with half a Krispy Kreme donut. Go ahead and click on any one of those donuts you want, though. doesn't matter which one you click on. <laughs> click on any one of those donuts you want. And why I had you click on those donuts is we actually have some very interesting options. Now, if you remember, if you were in the 1 o'clock class today, I sent all 20 pictures to Rolando on Facebook really quickly. But imagine if in a couple seconds you can send thousands of pictures to someone. <coughs> What's cool is you can share directly from Google Photos pictures that have already been uploaded to the cloud, so you don't have to reattach them. If you shake your mouse and you look in the upper right-hand corner, you will see uh, three little dots with two lines connecting them. Do you see that there? Yeah. Go ahead and click on those three little dots with two lines connecting them. Yeah. No, not that one. Yeah, the little share button. Yeah, there's different ones. That's above the line when we said you don't know. Share right there. Okay. Three, the, the two lines. Yeah, not the triangle thing. Yeah, the like mostly triangle thing. Oh, Yeah. So the mostly triangle thing. Did you find it? No, it's doing it. It's thinking about who to send it to. It's okay. It's fine. 
It's just loading who to send it to. It's okay. Just so you can see that. That's all I need to do. And then what you would do, what you would do, it's not going to load for all of you because I didn't give you access to my contact book. So, uh, But the cool thing is you can type in an email address right here and it will share either that picture with them or you can make a new shared album. The cool thing is you can send thousands of pictures at a time to someone and they can actually add pictures to that album as well. And what's very interesting is it removes your location from the picture. So if you take pictures in your house and you want to show them to someone, they don't necessarily need to know where you live. There's a lot of safety features that are built in here that you wouldn't have even thought would need to be built in. Yeah? Can, can you do that when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, when you're on airplane mode? No, you, to send those pictures, you need to have internet to be able to send them. So you need to have internet to be able to send them. Yeah? So, um, I found myself in so-called Google accounts, Google Photos ah. accounts. So, I know exactly where your answer is going. As of three days ago, before three days ago, the answer was no. Google just had something called Google I.O. When we meet together on the last C day, I'm going to have some really interesting updates on Google Photos for you. Now, you can share albums. You can order physical photo books. These things are rolling out in the next week or so. So they should be rolled out by the time we go to St. Petersburg. Like they were announced, they're not rolling out everywhere. But after, in the going further with Google, we'll talk about that. They have shared libraries. Yes, you can share your entire library with someone now. <coughs> Three days ago, that came out. It came out on, uh, like, Wednesday. So, or no, not, uh, last Friday. It came out on Friday. So three, four days ago, that option actually came out. And we'll go over that to give you a little concept. Now, the other cool thing we can do, if you click on the black area to the side, don't worry if your thing's loaded or not, it's okay. Yeah. We click on that black area to the side, Please don't click on it, but you'll see a little pen. You see a little pen right there? Shake, shake your mouse. Don't click on the pen. I'm just making sure you see it. That's how you would edit the picture if you wanted to. If you click on it, it means I'm going to get 20 duplicates of my donut, which is something I don't need right now. You can also trash it. Don't trash it, but you can trash it. Or do you see the little three dots that don't have lines? Click on that. That's how you can do a slideshow. You can download the picture. You can do all of these different things with that picture of the donut. So I can do all those different things. And you'll see all the people that have shared the donut to give you that concept right there. If you hit edit, just go ahead and hit done. I know a couple people hit edit. So just go ahead and hit done on your edit because I don't want anybody to edit. Now, we've got a couple more things to do. In the upper left-hand corner, do you see the little arrow, the little white arrow? Mm -hmm. Click on that guy. The little white arrow in the upper left hand corner. Now you should see the four pictures of the donuts again. Now I ate something else that day that was even more disgusting <laughs> than a Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburger donut. The problem is this is something that Google Photos can't search for. But what's cool is if you can find something you did during that day, do you see that little arrow right there? Yes. You can click on that. Go ahead and click on that. And that expands out the entire day. So that'll show you everything that happened that day. The arrow on the top of the last donut expands out the entire day. Oh, you clicked back a little bit too far. Just this one. Just hit enter on the donut. Hit the arrow now. And that will expand out the entire day. And what I will show you that I had that day, this is me. This is Fat Richard eating a Krispy Kreme donut. Bacon cheeseburger. There he is. Aw, oh, so delicious. Fat, unshaven Richard. It, but here's the thing I ate that was even more disgusting than a Krispy Kreme donut. It was called a pork parfait. Oh, God. Oh. Pork, yes. Yes. It's not as bad as it looks. It's barbecue pork, barbecue sauce, and mashed potatoes. It's not ice cream. I'm kind of stuck somewhere. You want to do a slideshow? Oh, don't give me this only in America stuff. You guys eat just as bad things in the UK. I'm sorry. I'm not taking that only in America garbage. Uh, sorry, you lose. Uh, I've seen some of the things. You have Krispy Kremes in your malls. We don't have them in our malls. They're standalone locations. Uh, our Krispy Kremes are one stop. Yeah, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, you have to go there specifically to go to Krispy Kreme in the States. You go to the mall, you're at Marks and Spencer, you're like, hey, there's a Krispy Kreme right there, you know, uh, so don't hate. Uh, but I want to show you two more things. Two more, yeah. 
Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. That, that's just, we're all doing a single action at the same time, and it's being angry with us. It's okay. Let's do two more things real quick. And we're going to go a little bit more into depth with Google Photos when we go deeper with Google, because there's some cool changes that have come to Google Photos. Do we see the search box up on the top? I want you to click on that search box and delete everything from the search box. Search box. Should be able to delete everything from the search box. Okay. And when we delete everything from the search box, if you look on the bottom, we'll see some locations. Miami, Ogis, Southampton, Virgin. Do we see those? Yes. yes. Do you see where it says show more under Virgin? Google Photos can automatically sort your photos based on where they are taken. What I mean by that is I mean giving you a click show more, and it should go there in a couple seconds. Yep. So click, click show more. It's going to automatically sort your photos based on where they are taken. Now, you can search for them based on where they're taken, but these are, I can see all of my pictures taken in Copenhagen. All of my pictures taken in Fort Lauderdale. All of my pictures taken in Stavanger. All of my pictures taken in Royal Palm Beach. All my pictures taken in Pisa, San Francisco, London, Miramar, Pompano, I don't know, all these places, uh, Tampa, Barcelona. If I wanted to see La Sagrada Familia, I can click on Barcelona, and I would see the pictures of La Sagrada Familia, and I'll see all these pictures. It takes a little while to load, because it's loading hundreds of thousands of pictures in these different locations. But it changes the geographical area. So you say Rome, put it down to a, an area of Rome. Yes, 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 yes. So put it down to an area of Rome, V-A-T-I-C-A-N-C-I-T-Y. That's an area of Rome, technically. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Vatican City. Technically, it's a different country, technically. Technically, yeah, I'll give you that. So uh, I have not, um, Colosseum. Someone help me spell that. Uh, C-O-L-I-S-E-U-S. So that's an area of Rome is the Colosseum. And let's just see what it finds real quick. May 25th, 2012, that seems about when I was last in the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And yes, so it's gotten those specific areas of, yep, yeah, there's the Coliseum, that's a specific area of Rome. Good question. So you can go in and you can put in all of those different things like that. The last thing I want to show you, this is something I'm just going to show you on my screen, because I don't want to tax every one of your screen. Imagine for a second if Google Photos could edit your photos and edit your videos for you. Okay. This is not crazy. Now, just because you were mentioning Vatican City or mentioning Rome, here's what's cool. I did not take this picture you're about to see. This is a picture that was shared with me. My assistant took a whole bunch of still pictures in the Vatican City. Google Photos automatically put those pictures into a panorama and colorized part of the panorama. Oh, wow. It colorized part of the panorama. What these are called is these are called creations. I'm going to show you a couple on my screen. What I'm about to show you, I did not make any of these things you're looking at right here. Is Google Photos made these all itself. So it takes your pictures, it takes your video, it analyzes it, and then it makes... This was a pretty crappy picture, to be honest, off of the boat in, uh, when we were in the fjords. And it took it, added a watercolor filter to it. I didn't Beautiful. take, I mean, I, I took this picture, but I didn't take yeah. didn't this picture. I, I don't know if I can view the original. Uh, download, I can download the original if I wanted to just, to, just to show you what the original looked like. I'll pull down the original. So I can pull down the original. Just here, here should be, I think this is the original. That's the original. This one almost looks like a painting. And then that one is oh, a painting. Incredible. Google Photos did that for me automatically. That's what's really cool. So this is, let me see if I can get this to play real quick. This is that concert. I told you it took a concert and it edited the concert together all on its own. Now what I did is I took about 45 minutes to an hour of video of the concert. I'm gonna give it a second to catch up. I took about 45 minutes to an hour of video. It took it and it chopped it down to 25 seconds with what it thought were the best parts of the concert. I didn't edit this. It put in extra music, it put in the transitions, it put in all those things. I didn't do anything here, just so you can understand. Because here's the thing, a lot of us have our photos and our videos, they sit on our phones, they never get edited, they never get this, they never get that. So they've gone ahead and they've taken, I don't even know where this was, this, I think this was Dublin. Actually, I can tell you where it was, because guess what? <laughs> I don't have an exact map of it. 
it black and whited it, it put a frame around it, it did all of these things to our picture. It's, it'll actually take and it'll animate pictures. Uh, this is, people took some pictures of one of the production shows. A guy took a picture of some of the production shows, it automatically edited it together, and the cool thing is, it doesn't just edit it from one device, it will edit it from across all of your devices. Do you actually instigate that? So you can instigate it, but no, it comes up automatically. That's why it. A that's so why when I said. How do you know it's there then? It, you remember when it asked if it would, if it can send you notifications? It'll send you a notification. It'll say, "Hey, we made a new movie on your device," and it'll go ahead and it'll do it. It's called creations. It'll make it all on its own. You can instigate it as well, but we would never instigate it as a group because that's destructive. Mm. What I mean by that? That I have to clean up. But this is a combination of videos. These were taken with my Samsung phone because my Samsung phone is much better in low light. It's put filters on, it's done all that, but I took a picture of a light that was out in the eye lounge with my iPhone before this, and it actually saw they were taking it out at the same time. <laughs> and I've got pictures and video and everything mixed together with music and does it on its own, and it actually artificially, intelligently figures out what's in the video and then applies proper music to it. So it knew that this was a little show that was done on the Oasis of the Seas, and it automatically applied this to the video. So I, let me let it pause for a second. So it edits it, it does it all on its own. So not only does it store your pictures, not only does it let you search your pictures, but it actually automatically edits it. So here's the question we have to end with. I've shown you a lot of positive sides. What's the downside? What's the downside? There isn't really a downside, I can tell you. The idea of Google Photos is to get you deeper into the Google ecosystem. Let's be honest, how many of us use Bing to search? Well, that, that, that's the simple answer. The stronger you are tied into Google Photos, the harder your switching cost is. But what I want you to understand is, unlike iCloud, unlike Samsung Photo Gallery, unlike any of that, you can use this on any device, and it's to Google's benefit to let you use this on any device. And this is why, honestly, if I were a betting man, which I am, I put more money in the stock market in Google rather than Apple. Because yes, Apple makes money selling a device, but they sell you that iPhone, and you don't update that iPhone. Yes, they might sell you for $2.99 a month, but what you've got to understand is you're making Google's artificial intelligence significantly smarter. That's what you're doing here, is you're making the artificial intelligence significantly smarter over time. So, the fifth time we meet, this is the first time, the fifth time we meet, we're going to talk deeper in this. We're going to look at YouTube. We're going to look at uh, Google Docs which is a way to store all of your Word and Excel and PowerPoint files and other things you might have other than Google Photos. And we're going to look at all kinds of different Google stuff as well as, believe it or not, Google hardware. So Google has their own hardware. They have their own Wi-Fi routers. They have their own phones. Now understand, a Samsung phone is not a Google phone. It's a Samsung phone running Google software. Google actually now has a Google phone running Google software, which we'll talk about. Google has Wi-Fi routers that you can run at home. They give yourself better Wi-Fi coverage. I have a lot of this crap on board for some reason. But what's really cool is this is evolving, it's getting better, and Google and Apple, as much as people think they're against each other, they're together, because one's a product company, and one's a services company, and they kind of work together there. Yeah? Just, I suppose I think myself and a lot of people really are from the generation where basically said, nothing comes for free. Nothing does come for free. Um, but this coming in. It doesn't come for free because it, it ties you into Google services significantly wow. more. Yeah. So if you use Google Photos, you're much more likely to use Google Search. And I guarantee a lot of you in this room are going to probably take some of your Google Photos information and upload it to YouTube, which then Google has advertisers that run on the YouTube videos. You see, nothing's free, but you're not paying for it with money. I would not use something I didn't trust. It's the same reason that people go to me all the time, why don't you have a Yahoo or AOL account to check when they go under? I go, because I don't want to give them any of my information. I don't even want to give them my first name or my last name. <laughs> Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook are companies I actually trust with my information. Everybody else, I don't trust with my information, as weird as that sounds. Uh, everybody else has been hacked. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you something kind of off the record is, I've been asked to resubmit a background check for some reason to Royal Caribbean. And the company that wants to run my background check has only been hacked six times in the last two years. So I'm refusing to do that, if that makes sense. You know? So there's only a few companies, a handful of companies I trust. Tomorrow in here at 3.30 is something a little bit different. We're going to be in here for about 45 minutes talking about camera stuff. Much more specific than in the 1 o'clock class. The 1 o'clock class, we're going to be don't use the flash. In the class that we're going to talk about, I'm going to show you 
how the flash works, the different colors the flash actually flashes in, how it flashes in three different colors, how your camera moves, a lot of different accessories for taking photos and different things like that, as well as how this camera works, which is right, that's actually a camera right there. I'll explain to you what that's doing tomorrow. And the important thing is for 45 minutes tomorrow, and so the first 45 minutes are here, 45 minutes tomorrow we're gonna be walking around the ship. Make sure your phone is charged before that class. We're gonna be using some different shooting scenarios, like how you shoot through glass. How you shoot through glass, how you shoot proper perspectives of the ocean, how you shoot all these different things, how you should properly take a selfie, what an HDR means, all kinds of different stuff like that. We're going to talk about that. So that's going to be, and then we won't meet again after that until after Russia. Uh, I'm going to bid you do, but don't leave right now. I'm going to give you one more piece of information. For now, 